think it's about time we have a proper discussion on Anthony. I get asked a lot of questions on stream. Do I believe in Anthony as a footballer? Do I think he has a future at the club? What is good about him? What is bad about him? So today I think we will try and go over it, give my thoughts and break him down as a player. Because... Without doubt, he has not done good enough since he joined the club for about £85 million last summer. We can see here that in all competitions, he has three assists and what's that? Four, five, six, seven, eight goals. 11 goal contributions for £85 million in 12 months is not really the sort of return you're looking for. It's not value for money. And I think that the problem also is that some players will kind of fail the, the stat test. Some players, we look at them from a st uh, statistical point of view and they don't look very good. However, when we see them on the pitch, we see something very different. But the problem with Anthony is that isn't the case either. Now, I don't want to just completely criticise him and completely destroy him because I dare say he is struggling for confidence at the moment. He's had a lot of issues going on off the pitch, which I'm not going to discuss today. But that does have to affect a player. It does have to be in the back of their mind. And at the end of the day, he is human. And, you know, he does have qualities which he brings to the side. He is good at pressing out of possession. He does bring a good intensity and a good intelligence when trying to press forward. He also, in possession, does do a pretty good job of holding the width. We know that stretches the pitch, makes it more difficult for the opposition to defend. And we also know that at times he slows things down. Now, that's actually something which people use to criticise him. However, in this particular United side... I actually think it's, it's a good thing. Rashford likes to speed it up. Bruno Fernandes likes to speed it up. Having someone like Anthony who can take his time a bit more, I actually think is a positive. However, despite that, there are still a lot of things he needs to do much, much better. So before we continue into the video, a quick shout out to today's video sponsor, jerseyfifa.com, the home of all of the greatest football kits. Whether that be the new latest releases or the old classic ones like this, Jersey FIFA has something for everyone. And now you can check it out yourself using the link in the description down below. And also make sure to use code JERSEYFIFA for 10% off when you order. So the main criticism when it comes to Anthony is that he is too one-footed, he's too predictable, and it's obvious what he wants to do. And to be fair, it, it is a reasonable criticism. He is very one-footed, he is very left-footed, always looking to initially start wide, then pick up the ball and come inside into these areas. And of course, that is a problem. At the top level, and again when you're costing this amount of money, you need to be a player which can go both ways. You need to have that unpredictability about your game. But I actually think the bigger problem, rather than being too one-footed, is his inability to create separation. I think if he was better at creating separation between himself and the opposition, or more importantly, the ball and the opposition, I think being one-footed wouldn't be such an issue. Because yes, it may be predictable, but if he was better at separating himself from a defender, it would still be hard to defend. However, Anthony is not good at doing that. And there's two main reasons. He's not quick and he's not powerful. Traits which we typically, you know, relate to top wingers at the top level. Marcus Rashford, for example, on the other side, has had questions over his form this season, but he always offers you a lot of pace and power. Someone like Garnacho at United also offers you pace, may not, maybe not power. But we've always seen throughout history that the top level, the really top level wingers, are either very quick or very strong. And the real elite ones are usually both. Yes, there is the odd exception, which are incredibly technically gifted, an incredible low centre of gravity, but even those players tend to have good acceleration and, you know, good ball manipulation to, again, separate themselves from the opposition defender. I don't think that Anthony does that very well at all, and that is the biggest problem for me with Anthony, and it's something which I think is quite hard to work on. For example, with his weak foot, if given time in training and if it is something which he chooses to focus on or the, the staff choose that he should focus on, you can improve your weak foot. That is something that you can do. I don't know that it will ever be of the top level, but that is an area that he can work on. However, because of just his, his frame and, you know, genetically how he is as a person, I don't know that he will ever be the quickest player. And I'm also not sure that he will ever be the strongest or the most powerful runner with the ball. And that is a genuine problem because that isn't even a coaching issue. It is just a deficiency in his game, which is really hard to make up for. Yes, with strength and conditioning, you could improve it to an extent. But some people are just a lot quicker. Some people are naturally more powerful due to their frame. Anthony doesn't have that. And that, for me, is actually the biggest problem with him. It's not that he's too one-footed. It's that he cannot separate himself from the defender. However, on top of that, he also has issues in terms of thought process, his, his intelligence in the game. And again, this comes from being too predictable. The amount of times we see him cut him aside onto his left foot and try and bend a shot at goal, 
when it quite clearly isn't the right option. I mean, if we go to his shot map so far since he's been in the Premier League, but the bigger circles are circles with high XG and the green circles are gold. We can see here that he's taking a lot of shots which are small circles, small XG, which means they're extremely difficult chances, particularly these ones though on the edge of the penalty area outside the box. He needs to shoot from there less because, you know, he scored once doing it. So he's not really that good at doing it. It's something he actually done really well for Ajax when he was over in Eredivisie. He was a very good finisher, but he seems to have lost that since moving to the Premier League. Do I know why? No, perhaps it's because the opposition are a bit more physical, a bit more touch tight. It makes it more difficult for him to get the ball out of his feet and get a clean connection. And that is another issue. He lacks a clean connection on the ball. His ball striking ability just isn't great. Marcus Rashford, for example, is a very good ball striker. Anthony isn't he scuffs so many shots and there's so many balls which he cuts inside and he hits and they just kind of float you don't see many floaters from Marcus Rashford they might get blasted a mile over but at least he is striking the ball cleanly or truly at least with power Anthony doesn't strike the ball very well the other problem he's got also sorry Anthony we're really being quite harsh on you here is that his delivery into the box isn't very good either. Now, I think some of this is because of the system, because we don't see him getting a ton of support down the right-hand side. He often becomes quite isolated, which means it's easier to mark him, which does make it easier to cross. However, he does have certain situations where he's coming inside onto his left foot, and just to float a delivery towards the back post for someone like Rasmus Hoyland running in could be perfect, and United could have a really good opportunity. But again, Anthony isn't displaying it. He's also got issues on the counter-attack as well, and that is that half the time he just isn't quick enough to keep up with the attack, but also he isn't decisive enough. I think that indecision in his game is something which really annoys a lot of United fans, and it is frustrating to watch at times. Your team's on the attack, you get yourself into a good position, and your player can't quite make up his mind whether he should through ball it, dribble it, shoot or, or cross or whatever. When a player is unsure of what to do, they naturally slow down to buy themselves a bit of time. And, you know, I think in certain scenarios, that's very important. It's important to buy yourself a second before making a decision. However, again, the players at the top level do things at their own speed. Anthony doesn't feel like he does that. And of course, that's leading to him having a lot of problems in the side. Now, I still think Anthony can be a very good player. I still think that if he was in a better system, a system which got more support around him, I think he could be quite impressive. We saw it when he was at Ajax. He had a really good understanding with, uh, with Masraoui. Uh, an understanding of when the right back would underlap, when the right back would overlap, how Anthony was supposed to link with them, sometimes feed the pass to them, sometimes use him as a decoy to take a defender away. That was a good understanding, and it's something he doesn't really have at United. Certainly with Dallow, he doesn't. With Aaron Wambasaka, he has it a little bit more, but it's still not ideal. He also doesn't get the same support from the midfield, which he did at Ajax as well. He's also not in a side which has as much of the ball as what Ajax did as well, which, again, is another problem in his game. Do I think that Anthony is a bad footballer? Not at all. I think if United were much more possession-based, much more dominant, I actually think he could be a really good, effective winger in a possession-based system. But it almost feels like, to me, that perhaps he was signed at the wrong time. Because United aren't that possession-based side at the moment. And if you ask the question, is Anthony good in transition, the answer would have to be no. It almost feels like United have spent big on him very quickly to get him into the club, thinking that he could help implement Ten Hag's style. However, I actually think now looking back, he, he should have been more like the final piece of the puzzle rather than the starting point where you try and build your team. Because instead, we've now got a player who is just in a system which does not suit him. He's in a style of play which just does not suit him. Now, again, that could change. We could see Manchester United improve. We could see United improve in possession, sustain possession much more, uh, change system to get more players near Anthony. We could see more forward runs from the right back. And you would get a better Anthony. Do I think he's ever going to be a player which gets 20 goals and assists in a season? No, I just don't think he is that good. I think he's got the potential to be good, world class or elite, probably not. The question is, what can Ten Hag do in the short term to try and improve him? Because we aren't going to see a drastic change in United style where they're suddenly keeping loads of possession and playing the Ajax way. We're not going to see it. So how can you get more of Anthony? Personally, I think the best strategy would be to move him into more central positions where, you know, that the pace, the the power isn't as important. He also wouldn't be in constant one versus one situations where, again, his one footedness wouldn't be as much of a problem if he was playing inside the pitch. He does have a good low centre of gravity, so perhaps he could receive the ball in these sorts of positions and roll his man. 
And I think we've seen glimpses in recent weeks that he can do it quite well. I think we have seen glimpses that it could work. Of course, it would require someone like wan to push forward. And of course, it also throws out the balance of the whole attack. Do you now get both wingers coming inside? That's something that Ten Hag would have to figure out. But I think it's worth trying to figure out because, again, United were so keen to bring him into the club. To just give up on him doesn't make too much sense to me. I think it would be a little bit illogical to completely throw him out. However, I do think he, he needs to be dropped. I don't think he is doing enough. I think that performance, particularly against Fulham, was nowhere near up to standard. And no player, no matter how good you are, should be undroppable. Personally, I would be looking at one of these guys and saying, do you fancy a shot on the right wing? Ahmad Diallo soon returning from injury. Fakundu Palistri playing well against Fulham at halftime. Or, sorry, after coming on off the bench. And I thought Garnacho was good in that game as well. Could he be moved to the right-hand side? It could work. Marcus Rashford is another player which could be moved to the right-hand side. And then let's say Garnacho, for example, comes onto the left wing. Or Marcus Rashford stays on the left. Mason Mount plays on the right wing. There's definitely alternatives which Ten Hag can use. I don't think he is fully restricted to just using Anthony. I think if he does just stick with Anthony in the same current system, we're going to see the same problems because he is the wrong profile of player to play in the current way that United play. In the Ten Hag way, he could fit in. He could be really good. But in the current system, it does not work. And that is the problem with Anthony. He is too predictable. He isn't good enough at beating his man. He can't take him on either way. He doesn't have that burst of acceleration or the physicality. And his end product and decisions are really poor. All of these things are leading to a really disappointing right winger at Manchester United. Could his fortunes change? Absolutely. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. What is the best solution? Is it to move him inside to a more central, narrow position where the physical attributes wouldn't be as important? Is it to drop him from the team, to give him a rest, to bring someone like Facundo Palestri, Garnacho, Ahmad Diallo when he returns from injury, Marcus Rashford to the right-hand side? Is it to sign a completely new right winger? Is it to just have a bit of patience with him and give him more time? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And while you're there, make sure to like the video and also subscribe to the channel. But apart from that, thank you guys for watching. I hope you have enjoyed it. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.